In this video we are going to create this command box in which when we start typing we are getting not only the countries and cities but also the addresses from around the world. For this project we are going to use Google Maps API so you need to have the API key you can go here I'm going to leave this link in the description below so you can go to your credentials page and just create your own API key so you can call all the countries, cities and addresses. So let's start. As always, we're using Next.js. So I'm going to create new Next app latest and we are going to name it address autocomplete like this. We are using TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind CSS, Sources Directory, Nope, App Router, yes. And we are not going to customize the default import aliases. So we are just hitting enter on everything. We are using the defaults from Next.js. And the next thing we are going to use is, of course, ShadCN. So we are going to use that command box from ShadCN. And let's go here inside the docu docs installation, Next.js. So we are just going to run this command to install ShadCN. Here it is. This one is completed. So we are going to the address autocomplete and we are running the ShadCN initialization so we're using new york we can use stone and we are using css variables for teaming and that one is done awesome so next thing we can now just install with this command our command box and i'm just going to type in here command so we can just check it out quickly here command just to see how it looks so it looks like this and we are going to use all of these from our documentation so let's first just run the project so we are sure that that one is working and we can open it here address so we can install all other things and here we can just refresh and we should have yes here it is so a fresh copy of next.js application and now we can see how is this command box used so we are going to import all of these things inside of our code so i'm going to use cursor today and still testing it i'm still not paying it i'm still in the free trial so we'll see and here on our page i'm going to delete all this default stuff that we have from next.js and here instead of this image i'm going to import our command imports that we need and also this one so to call it inside and we are going to change this class names a little bit i'm going to say flex flex column and cursor is already giving me something let's try it out and here instead of 20 i'm just going to put a little bit more of padding this one is not used let's delete it and let's see how does it look awesome that's what we need we are going to remove these settings we are going to leave only suggestions for now here and now we can install and plan how are we going to use our google api we are going to use the google maps api package so it's this one the google maps slash google maps services.js and it's really easy to use this package and to manipulate with all the data that is coming in so we are going to install that one using pmpm and added that one to our project so now we are going to create here a new lib directory and there inside oh we already have it because shadcn created it and there we are going to create a new file and we can call it just google.ts like this now we are going to create our autocomplete function and i'm going to name it autocomplete just like that and that one is going to be well this cursor AI is already giving me everything, but now he made a mistake. So here we are going to create a response just like here, but we are going to await for our client, which needs to be from the Google Maps services.js, but not this one. We are going to create here client like this so we need to make an instance of that client and there we are going to use this place autocomplete and now it's good so now here 
we need our input, which is going to be this query, but we are going to change it to input so it looks better like this. And now here we need a key and that one is going to be our Google API key from our environment file, but currently we don't have it, so we need to create it. And I'm going to create here new file env.local and there I'm going to place my Google API key. And here, I think cursor is going to give me something, no? He gave me something last time, but it was not a valid Google API key. So I'm now going to save my API key here. You're not going to see it. Okay, now we have our API key. So now we can finish this method. So here, input does not exist in type place autocomplete request. Okay, because here we need params like this and to put it inside. Now it's good and we're key can be undefined. Okay, we're going to force it here. Now it's good and we are going to export our autocomplete function and here we're going to put try catch like this. Cursor is already giving us everything. I'm not sure if I like it or not. And now we can just return our return response data predictions like cursor is saying. So here inside of these predictions we have basically everything so we can see here in autocomplete and then in the response what are we getting back and here are the predictions so we are getting the description and that one is basically our like country address and something like that we have distance meters place id which is really important if you are saving these addresses you can save place id and based on that place id you can get the exact address and everything again from the google api and we are getting types and some things we're going to see we're probably going to use only description this time so let's get back now so now we are missing just one thing and that's really important for the security and safety of our api key and our client here for google map service and that's here the use server part and why is it important? Because this method needs to happen on the server side because we are using our Google API key and we don't want that one to be exposed. So now we can go to our page and here we can call our autocomplete function. Now, ideally, this would stay the server component and we would create a new, totally new, like address autocomplete component. And then we would need something like TRPC, GraphQL, or some kind of query that we would make and call this. But for the sake of speed of this video, I just want to show how is the Google API used. I'm going to use use effect inside of our page. So I'm going to turn this to a client component page. And here we are going to use use effect like this to call our autocomplete. So we are going to call just USA to see how is it working. But here we need first fetch predictions and that one is going to work like this. Yeah, it's good. Cursor AI is working really nice. And we need our prediction set predictions use state. So we are going to save predictions inside of our state. Now again, this one could be solved through some state management. Then we could call it from some other file. And now these predictions, we are just going to show them. First, we need to set them here instead of this console log. And here we are going to just map through those predictions. So we are mapping through each prediction and we are showing our prediction dot description. Now here we need our type and that's this one, place autocomplete result. That one is also coming from the Google Maps API and now it should be good. So here we have that it can be undefined. We're just going to say that it can be just empty array in case it is undefined. And let's see what are we getting now. So now we should have inside of our command box, we should have everything related to USA. Let's see. And yes, 
So now we're getting our suggestions, USA, then something in Turkey, Colombia, Turkey again. So it's working, we just need to set our input to be dynamic. That one should be now the easiest part, so we need a new state that's going to be called input, just like this. And here inside of, so instead of USA hard-coded, we're going to put our input there and we need our input as a dependency. So each time input is changed, we are going to call autocomplete again. And here again, we could add another upgrade that could be a debounce so that we have some half seconds of pause before calling autocomplete again. It would be good because we can type in 50 letters and get 50 autocompletes in like one second. So now inside of our command input here, we need here the cursor AI is already giving me value input. This one is good, but here it's a little bit different with shed CN. It's not on change. It should be on value change. And here we are just setting set input like this. Awesome. And we need to change our text, start typing to search. Nice. So let's test it out. Going to our application, refreshing and starting. P A R. Look how fast is it working. So in the same moment when I press letter A, it's giving us results from the Google API. And we are not getting only the countries and cities, but also if I continue, we are getting the exact addresses from this API. And now we can, when click here, we can fill all the things that we are getting from Google API, like our location ID, the latitude, longitude, and whatever you need for your application, this one can be really awesome addition for searching through all the addresses. I hope you enjoyed Warriors. As always, you have a GitHub repo in the description below if you want to clone this code and try it out on your machine. And if you want more content like this, join the Mighty Horde.